What's up, everyone? My name is Alan, founder and consultant of For Now Marketing, and welcome to day 11 of Brazemus 2023. In our last video, we talked about email subscription states, and today we're going to talk about push subscription states. And there's quite a bit of similarities between the two topics, but we are working with two different channels. So we go, so we'll go over some of the push specific details when it comes to push subscription. Let's get started. First, let's talk about push subscription states, which are very similar to the email subscription states that we discussed. So just like email subscription states, push subscription has the exact three states with the same definition. Subscribed is the default state when a user profile is first created in Brace. And a user's push subscription state moves to opt it in when the user accepts the operating system's push prompt. And here are examples of what the operating system push prompts look like for iOS, Android, and web. And I'm sure you have seen at least one of these before. I am opted into push for for now marketing. And you can see that on my user profile that my push subscription state is set to opt it in. One big difference between push and email is that for push, in order to be able to send push to your users, your users will have to accept one of these OS specific prompts. For email, this explicit opt-in was a strong recommendation, but for push, this is a requirement. And lastly, unsubscribe state is reserved for users who do not wish to receive any push from your brand. There's a few things to note here. One, a user's push subscription state applies to their entire user profile, which includes all of the user's devices. This means that even if your user is able to receive push from multiple platforms, for example, iOS and web, and if the user's push subscription state changes to unsubscribed, that means that they are unsubscribed from all push messages from your brand, both iOS and web in our example. And two, Brace does not automatically change a user's push subscription state into unsubscribed. So it is up to your brand to set up the logic to change the push state to unsubscribed, which will result in your users being unsubscribed from push from all of their devices. So that covers the three push subscription states, but you might be wondering, what does it mean to be push enabled? Let's see what the documentation page says. So push enabled filter takes into account two of the following. One, the ability for Brace to send a push notification also known as foreground push token, and two, the user's overall preference to receive push on any of their devices or their push subscription state. So the push subscription state that we just talked about with these three options, it's actually the second part of the definition of being push enabled. But what does the first part mean? What is a foreground push token? Push token is just a fancy term for a unique anonymous ID that's generated by a user's device that allows brands to put, send push notifications to that device. So once again, when you accept any one of these OS prompts, that generates a push token, which is then sent to Braze, which allows the brand to send you push notifications. So being push enabled means that one, you have a valid push token by accepting these push prompts, and two, your Braze push subscription state is either subscribed or opted in. So once again, being push enabled means that one, you have a valid push token by accepting these push prompts, and two, your Braze push subscription state is either subscribed or opted in. Simply put, if you're hoping to launch a push campaign, the best filter to segment your audience is push enabled equals true, because that filter will check for both one, a valid push token, and two, users who are subscribed or opted in. And here's an example of why the push enabled filter is better to use than the push subscription state filter. Let's say a user just installed your app and accepted the push prompt. And now this user's push state is opted in and they have a valid push token by accepting the push prompt. However, let's say after a few days, a user uninstalled your app. Now this user's push state is still opted in because Braze isn't going to change the user's push subscription state to unsubscribed. However, by uninstalling the app, the user no longer has a push token. And of course, your brand will not be able to send push notifications to this user because they've uninstalled the app. And if you still use the audience filter push subscription state equals unsubscribed or opted in, that user who uninstalled is technically included in that audience, but Braze is still not going to be able to send any push to this user because there is no longer a valid push token and obviously the app is uninstalled. 
So both filters will still only be able to send to the same eligible users, but the push enabled filter will give you a more accurate estimate of the number of eligible recipients of your push campaigns. The last note that I'll make on this documentation page is that there's a little bit of a circular definition going on here. So towards the top of the page, it says, by default for your users to receive your messages through a push, their push subscription state must be either subscribed or opted in and they must be push enabled. However, if we click push enabled and we jump down to the middle of the page where we see that the user's push subscription state is actually a part of the definition of being push enabled. So to avoid any confusion, I always tell my Brace customers to use the push enabled filter, and this will target all users who are eligible to receive push from your Brace dashboard. Because push subscription state is already included and considered into the definition of push enabled filter, I think that this is a superior audience filter to use. That's it for day 11. If you have any questions, please share them in the comments. We're happy to help. If you learned something from this video, please subscribe for more awesome Braze videos in the future. Thanks for watching and see you next time.